guys, this production music live. My name is Francois and today we're going to look at this track in the style of Boris Brecha or his label King Sirius and we're going to take a closer look at this drop section here where we have basically almost all the elements playing at once and we're going to quickly have a little overview here. As you can see down here we have nine return or send effects return channels where we have um, reverbs and delays and redux and more drums reverbs and a couple of delays and an auto filter with a delay. So these are just effects we are placing here and sometimes we're sending stuff in there just so you know. I'm closing this down and then we are going to take a look at the instruments that we are playing here. We have a sidechain kick here, then we have our kick and bass group. And below that we have a drums group with our drums elements. All these drums are made with our sample pack D Premium Volume 2. All of them are in here. I'm soloing kick and bass. Actually this bass for example is using one of the send effects. I'm opening the return channel. And you see we are sending this to the fourth effect and the fourth is the redux. So Below that we have our high bass. That one is basically playing the same bass pattern as the low bass but a couple more steps and sequences and towards the end of the pattern we have something like this. And then we have our main lead here. All the sounds in this Ableton project are made with Massive and actually this whole Ableton project file or template is available. You can click on the link in the description and visit our website productionmusiclive.com if you want to grab it and use it yourself. We have another plick sound here. And then we have some MOOC shots here, a sonar and a pad. And then we have um, a vocal effect and a crash. Okay, let's go to our kick and bass first. I'm soloing the kick quickly. You see we are using kick 5 miscellaneous from the premium volume 2, which is, so we are using kick 18 this one and we're cutting off some high frequencies here. Yeah and you notice what is that? What is that at the end of the kick pattern? So if I'm just playing four, one bar, where's that coming from? So as you can see we are automating a couple of things here. For example, let me quickly take off the MIDI keyboard controls and hit A so we can see our automations. And we have an automation to the reverb on return channel 3. So this one. So the last kick of our pattern here is being sent to the return channel and then it goes through this reverb and through this EQ here. And there you have this bumpy sub kick effect. And you can see this is quite an interesting technique here. The last kick in our pattern is first being played regularly on this kick track, but also that signal is being sent through the return channel here where we are sending it through the reverb and through this EQ and thereby we are creating this sub kick kind of effect with it. And we don't even have to use an extra track for that. So already a bit of movement going on here and we are just repeating this over time.
Okay, and let's take a look at our base. I'm quickly taking off the send effect here. So basically we are playing a saw wave here, we are playing another square the saw somewhere in the middle, an octave lower, we are playing a sine wave as well. And then we are sending half of this and this signal through a low pass filter here, which has this type of envelope opening up the filter whenever something is being played. And we have a little bit of noise also going through that filter, but not too much with this shape. So this is opening up this knob here. And then everything's being sent through the amp envelope here. And you see we have a little bit of attack going on. This is what we're getting. Yeah, and then we have this um, redux effect here on top. And then we're opening it up towards the end of the pattern. Heavy side chaining to our side chain kick, a little bit of EQ here, and a little bit of bass punch compression here with the glue compressor. Play it together with the kick. And on the entire group, we have another glue compressor. It's not too heavily applied, as you can hear. Just a subtle bit of compression here with very short attack and release times and a moderate ratio. So we are trying to tame our transients a little bit and glue these two together. And actually I want to play this high bass now. So basically we're also playing a saw wave here and then we are playing the virtual analog pulse to saw wave here on the saw position. And high metal noise is activated here but I don't think it's affecting the sound too much actually. So this is our patch and then we have a mid-side EQ playing here. We are cutting off a bit more in the middle and we are leaving a bit more lower frequencies towards the sides. So we are cleaning up the middle for our main bass, making room for the lower bass here. We are playing it together so they don't interfere. You can also see towards the end of the pattern, we are opening up our long tail reverb here. So we are going. So this top bass element makes sure our bass is really cutting through in the mix and can also be perceived in the higher frequencies. Now, if we take a look at the drum section we have here. So first of all, we have a glue compressor here in our group, making sure these drum elements are sitting more closely together and being perceived more as one drum unit or something. And then we have a noise element here with massive. White noise. And you know, a bit sidechain compression, a little bit of EQing here. giving it a little bit of width with the frequency shifter. Then we have a simple delay and then auto panning going on just slightly. We are not moving it too much back and forth, just like adding a little bit of movement, but rather centered, not too wide out to the left and right sides of our audio panorama. And we do have some swing going on. So we have the MPC Swing 60 uh, groove applied here. Okay, open hi-hat, plays the fifth send effect, so this is a drums room reverb, short decay time. Uh, 
and we're playing this pattern. These two elements here are important for a hi-hat groove. They really make it come more alive in the groove and in the context with the other elements. We are using another sample from our Deep Premium Volume 2 sample pack here. And below that we have a shaker. Actually two shakers. Again, groove applied. Swing 60, MPC uh, 16, Swing 60. If you want to learn more about Groove, we are just finishing up a Groove course and by the time this video is going to be uploaded, it's probably already finished and you can check out the link in the description. Also, check out the links in the description for full start to finish courses for tracks like this one with Ableton. We are actually also preparing a full start to finish course for this entire project here. Should be interesting, link in the description as well quickly take a look at the groove. So in context with the kick maybe and the bass. These tiny elements here really make the difference. So we have one shaker playing together with the kick and then we have the other one playing this one to three pattern here and then two, three and then three and then three and then we are repeating what we already had here. This is how you get stuff be perceived much more groovy and you can see even more if we are going to the claps here. So we have a couple of our claps loaded up. So this is basically how you achieve this groove. Play around with different samples, try to give them the same reverb room, in this case the snare room here with you know one second of decay time slightly applied. Okay, and then we have this other snare here, which is the one that cuts much more through than the mix. And then you have parts like this. So this is how we are adding drive. But important, don't use the entire velocity here. We are also not, not using 100% or something. We are at 68 here with the main element but also with these tiny additional elements, you want to go down a little bit in the uh, velocities here, this one as well. And that one is playing fully, but this one is then not playing fully. Okay, I'm putting the other claps in here as well. It's super groovy and it's still quite simple. We haven't done that much. How many elements are playing right now? We have four elements playing from the drums group here and then we have the kick and the bass playing and it already grooves. I mean, this is really the secret. The sound of this artist and label sounds quite complex but actually you can achieve it with quite a few elements only already. Okay, let's take a quick look at this percussions group. So in our sample pack, we also have uh, an extra section where we have percussion elements and these are usually taken out uh, from that area.
Again, groove applied, swing 60 here. And again, we are using this return channel here with a decay time of 1.3 on all of these elements. Okay, play the drums group together with the bass and kick group. And then together with that high bass here, we also took a look at that one already. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about that actually. So this pattern here and the sub bass pattern are not the same. So you see these steps here, it's one, one on four, one, two, two, one, two, four. And if we take a look at this bass and actually we can load them in together. So just playing the lower one. the high one on here. And then. So these are the patterns we are playing and moving over to our main lead now here. So this is actually being played together with the clap or snare position and then we have this uh, fourth position in the second uh, measure of the first bar. So we are playing with Massive again, we are playing the Pulse Saw and the Square to Saw and, and the other ones are not playing and we have this bright noise on top here. But for the most part our effects are taking place here behind the instrument. And let's see what happens if we are taking the Send Redux off here, which is this one. So that's the one making this kind of freaky little effect here with our Bitcrusher downsampling soft 12.3. Uh, like that sound wouldn't be able to cut through that nicely without this effect. So if I take this down and play everything. This thing has a hard time to cut through the mix. And if we put that in, if we leave this bit crusher, and you see also when we are opening these other filters towards the end of the fourth bar or the eighth bar, we are opening up this bit crusher also a little bit so we make sure everything is getting a bit louder so we still want to be able to hear this as well. Okay, so we also have a sonar sound down here. Playing that bit crusher as well. And this one is basically just a simple sine wave here. This one is off and that one is off as well. And then we have this little recording of the Moog. If you play it solo, it sounds like a synth, but if you play it in the mix, it sounds like a vocal shot or something.
Yeah, then here in the beginning we have a simple crash. Crash 8. And then we have a vocal. And then in the second part of our drop, we're adding another top element here with this plick. And you see this is basically done as triplet pattern. So you see this MIDI clip repeats after three measures. It doesn't play the entire two measures of a bar. It actually just plays one and a half. And that's how you achieve this triplet thing. And then you keep it, basically it repeats after this step. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have sidechain playing on top. And then also sometimes it comes with the beat or with the snare and then it kind of gets ducked out a little bit. Yeah, also um, sometimes you want to go up an octave or something or like create something towards the end of your bar that sounds, make it sound a bit more dynamic and interesting. You see like this uh, send effect delay is opening up towards the end of the bar here. It's the simple delay. It's the free to free delay with a feedback of 70. Okay, let's keep it at this stage with analyzing the structure of these two drop elements. Feel free to visit our website productionmusiclive.com supporting this channel and giving us the ability to put out videos like this one. You can find the drum samples we use there in our drum sample pack D Premium Volume 2. You can find this Ableton project file. You can also find start to finish courses for tracks like this one in Ableton and sound design courses and courses on how to write, you know, nice chord progressions. Feel free to comment and like, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you next time. It's time.